Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for Furious 7, which of course is the seventh iteration of the Fast and Furious franchise, and this is sadly the last one to star Paul Walker, who has been with the series since the beginning. Uh, he wasn't in the third one, but he's been in every other one, even this one, even though he didn't finish his role before he died, of course. They had to use a lot of CG and stuff and uh, other shots of, from past movies that they never used to finish his role in this movie, but sadly this is his last film. Uh, and I was looking forward to this movie because I actually really did enjoy the last two Fast and Furious movies. I think they're actually really fun movies. And the whole family aspect actually works in those, which I never thought it worked in any of the other Fast and Furious movies. I thought the first one was okay. Second one was ridiculously dumb. Kind of fun, but not... I mean, these movies are ridiculously dumb, but the second one was so dumb... But there wasn't anything really memorable, but it was so dumb, it was still fun, I guess. Third one, I just didn't like, and the fourth one, I hated. I, I hated the fourth one, I'm sorry. A lot of people do, uh, love that one. Me, I don't like it. So the fifth one was a big surprise. It was great. The sixth one was a lot of fun as well. So this one, I was looking forward to. What did I think of Furious 7? Well, let's talk about it. The story for Furious 7 takes place after the end of Furious 6, where Furious 6 ends with, of course, the bad guy seemingly getting killed, even though in this movie you find out he didn't really get killed. A little confusing. But anyway, the end of Furious 6, you know, the bad guy played by Luke Evans is killed, and then at the very end, like at the end of the credits, you find out, uh-oh, he had a brother played by Jason Statham, and he just killed one of the main characters in Fast and Furious 6, or, or the whole series, actually, I should say, and now he's coming after Dominic Toretto and Brian O'Connor and everybody else. So now he's coming for them, and the whole movie is pretty much this guy, Jason Statham's character. He is a ghost. He is a badass. If he wants you dead, he'll find you and kill you, and you can't find him. So the whole point here is Vin Diesel has to find out a way to find Jason Statham before Jason Statham finds them. They find out a way they could do this. Uh, Kurt Russell shows up out of nowhere as like a government agent uh, called Mr. Nobody and he says there's a thing called the God Eye. The God Eye is this thing made by a hacker where you put in a computer and you can find pretty much anybody. So if you get this God Key thing or God Eye, God Key was in uh, chappy, uh, God Eye, then I will let you use it and find Jason Statham before he finds you and you could go take him out. So that's the story. <laughs> a little convoluted. Well, not really. It's pretty simple. I made it sound convoluted. But anyway, the whole point is Jason Statham trying to find them. They're going to try to find him before cars, boom, boom, boom. Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to give this movie credit. The story itself is very simple. It's a revenge story. It's actually a double revenge story in a way because... Jason Statham's trying to get revenge on Vin Diesel, and Vin Diesel's trying to get revenge on Jason Statham for killing one of his crew, and of course, you know, the crew isn't just a crew, that's family, and Vin Diesel's pissed because, oh, you killed one of my family members. Everybody's pissed about that, Paul Walker, everybody. So, of course, they're going to go after Jason Statham, Jason Statham's pissed, whatever. Um, and it, it's, it's a very simple story, but I will admit, the last two movies did the family aspect right. This one actually added some dramatic heft, some emotional heft, because the other two, you didn't really have anybody dying. There was no, there was never a sense that any of them were going to die. I thought the emotional part was really well done, the family, all that stuff. I thought the comedy was pretty good here, even though most of it was mostly Tyrese saying something stupid, saying something silly, corny, whatever. And I thought that worked for the most part. One of the funniest gags in this is actually one of the silliest moments in the trailer, where all the cars are falling out of the airplane. Uh, and Tyrese doesn't want to go because he's scared, which anybody in their right mind would be scared to do that. Drop out of a freaking airplane in a car with just a little parachute to make sure they're safe before they hit the ground. Uh, and he, of course he doesn't want to go and it actually has a really good payoff and his reaction is really funny. So there's actually a lot of funny moments, a lot of emotional good parts. Uh, the dialogue itself is very cheesy. There's a whole subplot with M Michelle Rodriguez trying to remember all this stuff because in the last movie she lost her memory and doesn't matter anyway in this she's trying to remember all the people she knows and she just can't remember because she had amnesia and it's a very very corny subplot especially when it gets to when it gets to the whole oh i love you i love you too with vin diesel and michelle rodriguez it gets really cheesy uh but besides that it does work for the most part the dialogue is great but it does have really good moments some really good one-liners too that are pretty cornball but in the arnold schwarzenegger sense like where it's really corny and not really that funny but because the actors do a good job of reading them they kind of they're kind of badass or they're kind of funny in a way so there you go but of course this movie is an action movie straight up an action movie and it is 
a very thrilling action movie with some amazing special effects, some truly outstanding special effects. Uh, when all the cars are jumping out of the airplane, when the car is jumping from building to building, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen both of those scenes. And those are the two highlights of the action. And I will say this, if there's anything a problem with the action is that the end action scene is a little bit too long and it's not as good as the last two movies action scenes where those two movies ended with something really like whoa crazy uh one involved an airplane and the, the fifth one involved like two cars carrying a safe and smacking things around and stuff that was badass and this one has like a drone which goes around shooting things and it never really never really feels epic like the other two movies did it, it kind of went on a little bit too long and they kept coming back from Vin Diesel and Jason Statham fighting each other and it was like really long breaks in between like they'll fight each other and then five minutes of just driving then they'll come back and they'll be beating each other up I was like oh yeah I forgot they were fighting uh so the action is really good especially the the parts where it's really silly really really silly silly where they're jumping out of the airplane and stuff like that those scenes are great and they're jumping out of the buildings a lot of cars flying in this movie uh, I, I I found out that was a motif really early on in the movie um but those are the fun moments. Those are the inventive moments. They're silly, but at least the special effects and the practical effects, the cars that they used to actually destroy and stuff, looked real enough so it never looked really goofy. So I'll give it that. I really thought the action was a lot of fun here. Never boring. Uh, the characters are likable as all hell. The actors do a damn good job here. Vin Diesel is charming. Paul Walker's charming. Everybody's charming in this film. Uh, Kurt Russell is a great addition. He's hilarious. I, I thought he was great in this film. Even the new additions to the crew, like Jason Statham, he's actually a pretty for formidable opponent, villain. He shows up out of nowhere all the time, and you're just like, uh-oh, here he is, and he's going to screw some stuff up. Uh, and he and he actually he does a well job well done job at playing a villain which you never really see Jason Statham as a villain I think the last time I saw him as a villain was in a what cellular and that was like ten years ago there's probably other movies that I'm just not thinking of but uh yeah he was a uh, oh Nomeo and Juliet how did I forget about Nomeo and Juliet he played a uh, a bad guy I don't remember anyway so there, there you go that uh, that is a uh, that's pretty much my review. I really have nothing else to say. It's a really fun film. Furious 7 is a really entertaining movie all the way throughout. If I have any problem with anything, it's some of the really cheesy dialogue, the whole Michelle Rodriguez subplot, which comes back over and over again. Of course, has to have a, a big dramatic payoff at the end. Uh, and, you know, I mean, it is silly. It's really silly, but that's, I, I've come to expect that. I really have. Uh, also, Jason Statham versus Dwayne The Rock Johnson, that was a badass fight. I have to say that. Some of the hand-to-hand -hand fights, really good, especially the other one with, uh, Michelle Rodriguez and, uh, you know, actually, no, Michelle Rodriguez and Ronda Rousey was great, but Tony Ja versus Paul Walker, which I never thought I would see that fight, and it's the last time we'll ever see that fight, but, um, that was a really good fight, too. All the hand-to-hand -hand fights were great in this movie. Damn, man, this, this movie does action well. Good job, Fury 7. I really enjoyed this film, and I thought it was a very, very well-done tribute to Paul Walker. Towards the end, the last, like, three minutes of the movie will make you shed a tear. I, I, I will admit, I was getting a little, like, oh, God. Uh, he, was a, he was a good actor. I liked him. I mean, he wasn't great, but he was, he was good. He was decent. Uh, I know he was a good person, but, man, I didn't know him. Why am I doing this? And I was like, oh, man, I was, like, tearing up and stuff. It's a really well-done tribute towards the end. <laughs> you will be like, oh, man, because you, you just feel, like, the companionship between all of them. And they, they've been doing these films for, what, 14 years at this point? Or, well, like, 12? I don't know when the first one came out. But, um, yeah, they've been doing it for a long time, and you really feel that at the end. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's Fury 7. I'm going to give this movie, I'm going to give it a 36 out of 40. There are some bad parts in here very small bad parts even the side plot with michelle rodriguez isn't terrible it's just cheesy and you'll be like all right let's go on and then a badass action scene will happen you'll be like yeah so yeah there you go 36 out of 40 it's a great movie it's really fun all the way throughout um besides maybe the end action scene it gets a little long but even that has some really good moments like the tony Ja and paul walker action fist fight scene that was awesome um and i'm glad to see tony Ja back too i haven't seen him in a long time so anyway there you go thank you and goodbye